Hey boys, welcome back to some more NRL Supercoach preseason discussion. And we had the first week of trials just gone, which was very exciting. A lot of footy. There was there was so much football. It was great, and uh, we got uh, you know there's some good there was some good footy played. We got to see a lot of young guys come through. Got to see a little bit of what we're going to find in the regular season. Obviously, everything in the trials you got to take with a bit of grain of salt because minutes and impact and all, all that sort of stuff like it, it's a little bit uh skewed but i thought we'll we'll have a little bit of a discussion i watched yeah the only game i didn't watch was the dolphins titans like i watched the highlights and i watched the little little bits and pieces but i didn't get a chance to watch that i, I watched pretty much all the other games um a few of them i, I didn't watch the full 80 but uh i wanted just to have a look at you know, obviously some super coach relevant guys. So I'm, I'm obviously not going to remember every relevant player, but I was trying to keep an eye on guys that I was, uh, you know, somewhat keen on. So let's just go through, we'll go through any potential guys and, and, uh, any, again, they're not, not too, there's, there is a couple of big, uh, ramifications from the trials, which we'll get to, but, uh, again, take everything with a, a grain of salt. So let's go through, um, how am I going to do this? You know what? Let's go through, yeah, we'll go position by position. Actually, I was going to go through team by team. Actually, yeah, we'll, we will go through team by team. I think that'll be easier. So dummy halves, Broncos, not much to really glean. I mean, Blake Moser, star of the future, but not going to get the minutes. Front row forwards, a couple of interesting notes here. Um, I mean, we know, Payne Haas, I mean, whether or not he had his best game, it doesn't matter. He's going to be a star. Corey Jensen, he's 400k. He's a little bit expensive, but it does seem like Jensen is probably the guy that's going to replace Flegler. I, I don't know. I, average 40. You could, you could do worse. I don't know if Jensen gets like a point per minute, gets like 45, 50 minutes. Not the worst. I don't think he's the worst. Fletcher Baker, seems like people are probably going to wean off Baker. Uh, I just don't really... Yeah, I think uh, I think it's Jensen's spot up, uh, up starting. Xavier Willison. <laughs> I mean, everybody's going to jump on Willison. He was outstanding in the All-Stars. Like, he looked... Yeah, he looked incredible. I mean, again, you got to... The, the indigenous forward pack wasn't the best, but he was still just ripping and tearing. He didn't play big minutes, but the impact was there. So, you know, if it, he's one of these guys that probably, if he doesn't get the minutes, it's not necessarily, necessarily going to be the worst case because he does have that impact and tackle busting and try scoring ability. Uh, to Cora, similar, but I would expect... I would expect Willison to probably be on the, I guess, front foot in terms of these two guys getting more minutes. I think Takora, again, you know, very, very uh, bright future for the Bronx in the front row. But I think Willison has earned the spot. Uh, Takora might get another bench, but I, uh, probably not, though. Um, honestly, Jade and Hunt look pretty good in the back row, I thought. But again, probably minutes not going to be there for him. Uh, second row, the only real talking point here is Brendan Piercora. Um, you know, he, he's a try scorer. He's got the upside. He's 420k. He did leave the game with uh, with a knee issue, so that throws a big spanner in the works, unfortunately. I, I don't know the latest on that, but yeah, if he's like 50-50 to play in round one, it's it'd be tough to pick him, honestly. I, and it would probably be somewhat fortunate because then you could pick another one of these back row options. And then if they stink it up, you just go back to Piacora if he looks good, if he comes back in like round two, round three, before he potentially increases in price. But Piacora, you know, like he's going to be one of these back rollers that doesn't have great base, but he's got the attacking upside. And uh, yeah, I th I mean, I was never that keen on Piacora to start just because the back rollers for the Broncos have never been like noted super coach guns. He does have a little bit of something more to him for sure, but I still, I still fail to see him going incredible, but 420k, he's still great value when it, when he gets, uh, when he gets a run, um, there's nothing in halfbacks, five eights, we didn't see Ezra play center wing, 
I mean, Cobo looked good in the centers, but at 600k, it's a bit too expensive. Dean Mariner, again, he's too he's too expensive. He just <laughs> he only played a few games, but he fucking killed it last year. So he's he's coming too expensive. I mean, if Corey Oates gets a wing spot at 450k. Again, it's probably just like slightly too expensive to spend. Uh, Jesse Arthur's, I mean, it's a hard one to grab. Like he played fullback um, for the Mari and didn't look great. But I mean, he's going to be on the wing. You would expect for the Bronx side. I, I don't know. There's not really too much to get from that. Again, I wasn't that keen on Arthur's anyway. But um, yeah, I think a lot of people are still going to go him. Although I think I don't know. It feels like there's going to be a few cheapies in the center wing that we can uh, we can pick up. But yeah, not not too much else. I mean, Corey Oates is. Or Deloitte, Hoyt, uh, Dean Mariner. They're all they're all sort of vying for a wing spot, I guess. And then fullback, I mean, Reese Walsh. Again, you know, <laughs> you know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a bit of a bit of rocks, but plenty of diamonds. He's one of these rocks of diamonds, but he he's a guy that has more diamonds than rocks in his game. So, I the draw is just too tough to start for Reese Walsh, though. I wouldn't be keen, but yeah, he, he's a gun. He's a gun, obviously regardless um we'll go down to so bulldogs next up here fullbacks i mean blake i, I didn't really think about blake uh he's, he's just fullback i was like oh is he center now he's just fullback so no you're not gonna go uh blake taff if he was dual he well i guess he yeah he pretty much only played fullback did he play in the heart? Yeah, I don't know. He's not dual, so it's fine. You're not going to go Blake Taff. I thought if he was dual, then yeah, maybe at 400k. Uh, center wing, we didn't see Crichton. We didn't see Kiraz. Uh, Blake Wilson looked good. He's 530k. Um, Bronson Sherry. I mean, he looked pretty good. Like 450k. He's in my team at the moment. I mean, he's a big body. He's fast. If he gets the center spot, like I'm... Yeah, he's going to be in my team, I think. He's just he's just got that about him. Like, even if the Bulldogs aren't the best, you know, Sherry is going to get the odd game where he gets a couple of tries or has a couple of barnstormers to, to make some cash. It's just a matter of if he gets a spot. Uh, Drew Hutchison is also a very interesting one now because he's, <laughs> he's dual halfback center wing, which is very funny. Uh, you're not going to pick him up at halfback, but center wing, he should be the starting halfback. Like, I... Yeah, he he was great. I thought like his kicking game is solid. He he's a very controlling halfback that I think the dogs need. Good defensively, you know he's got pretty good base stats. So I yeah, I, I'd be pretty keen. Like if he does get the starting spot at halfback, I I think I think I think he could do worse than uh, Drew Hutchison, uh, Gerald Skelton was very good, but I just don't see him getting the spot there. They got too many outside backs, but Skelton is a beast. Uh, Jamin Salmon, he started at lock, and he was he was fine. I mean, I think a lot of people are going to be excited because he started at lock, but obviously, it is Josh Curran's spot. I guess it, it's more ramifications for Josh Curran if he gets reduced minutes, if they want to use Salmon as that you know, link lock roll uh, for 20, 30 minutes, it could impact, but I still, you know, we'll get to Karen, but I still think Karen is a, a pretty safe bet, but Salmon, he was, he was fine, um, he just sort of passed, like, I, I don't know, I wasn't that impressed, I know people are going to get a little, little excited at 300k, but yeah, I, w I wouldn't be too excited there, uh, five eights, uh, so Matt Burton was pretty rubbish, <laughs> I mean, I just, yeah, I, I thought he was pretty ordinary, if I'm being honest. Uh, and yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't go him to start. Halfbacks, not too much to say here. Again, Drew Hutchison is the guy, but you'd pick him up in centre wing if you could. 2RF. Uh, so we saw, I mean, Preston played. I mean, honestly, if you're going to go for a really safe back rower, Preston isn't the worst, but I, I just think there's better value, even though Preston, I think, can be a gun in super. Like, he's just, he's very, very good. Uh, we didn't see kick out. We saw Curran in the All Stars. He was pretty good. I can't remember his minutes, but I thought he was solid enough. I mean, at 420k, like, even if he only gets 50 55. He is a base that beast, so he's going to make cash. I just, I wouldn't be too concerned. 
Um, we didn't see Vitala... No, Vitala Marin is left. That's right. Uh, Ryan Sutton, no. Liam Knight. <laughs> uh, he was poor. Liam Knight was very poor. Uh, he is in my team at the moment, but he is definitely not going to because he... He didn't get a start, and yeah, he's, he's like first touch, he came up with an error. He just, yeah, he's going to go out of people's teams very, very quickly. Um, who knows? I mean, try, again, trials, he did start on the bench, but I wouldn't be shocked to see come teamless round one if he does start, maybe. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see who they do start with, whether him or Sam Hughes or, or someone else in the front row. I'm not entirely sure, and then no one else there. The front rowers, yeah, we got um, a few guys. So Max King, I mean, he was fine, I guess, in a trial. Uh, Farmer Silly was pretty okay, but just can't see the minutes for him. Sam Hughes was, again, I think people are getting a little too excited for Sam Hughes. Like, he was good, and he did score a try, but I just, I don't know, the... the the type of player he, he is, at 240k, again, like, if he gets okay minutes, he's going to be a decent pickup. But I think people are getting a little bit too excited for him. I don't see his minutes being that big, just the way he plays. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Maybe he does play 40-plus. But I just, I don't know. I just don't see it. He'll probably, like, he, he's in my team, and he'll probably stay in my team. But I'm not, like, people are going a little bit crazy for Sam Hughes, I, I think, is a little overkill. But... I guess with the dog's lack of middles and Liam Knight stinking it up. So, you know, we could see Sam Hughes get some extra minutes, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the front rowers. And then dummy halves. I mean, Reed, Mar <laughs> Reed Marnie was okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I was I was honestly watching him. I'm like, fuck, is he going to have a... Is he going to turn it around this season? Like, he's always good for a try, like a fucking barge over try assist. Like, he just gets so many of those. He's good for a 40-20 at times. Like, it's just the fucking missed tackles and and the penalties that just dip his score. So, I, I'm not uh, I'm not overly keen on uh, Freed Marnie, especially with another dummy half we'll, uh, we'll talk about later. Um, we Next up, we have the Cows. So, yeah, we didn't see a whole lot from the cows, honestly. We can skip over this one pretty quickly. Um, the one guy, I mean, Thomas McKayley, I don't... Is he in the top 30 for the for the cows? He must be. He, he, he could jag a bench spot. Again, I don't know about the minutes, but... He had a good game. Like, th this is a guy that you, like, you shouldn't get too excited. I know he had, like... He had, like, good base. Like, he had a few offloads. He had, a, like, a fair few tackles and runs. But, again, he was playing in a very weakened Cowboys team, so he was asked to stand up. But he's not He's not going to have that impact in, in uh, you know, in the Cowboys' full-strength side. So just just weighing it a little bit. But, uh, you know, if you get to Ben spot, not the worst cheapy, I guess. Uh, 2RF, the only real guy of note here was probably Finney Fuyaki, who is very, very strong. I mean, again, you're not going to go him because they've got... I would expect him to get a bench spot. The only issue is that it probably affects Heal and Lukey a little bit because Nenai is going to play 80 minutes, like you would expect. And then Lukey, I wouldn't be shocked to see Lukey get reduced minutes and then Finny Fuyaki go into his edge for a few. Or do they use Finny Fuyaki through the middle? I mean, the man's a monster... Uh, great, great line runner, but he's powerful enough. He could play through the middle. I don't know. It's a little bit, a little bit dicey. Uh, you, you wouldn't go in, but it, it could impact other forwards for the cows. Um, and then, yeah, not, not too much else to really talk about for the Cowboys, honestly. Yeah, they're, they're playing with a very second string tight side. So I'll, I'll just go through. Don't want to waste too much time on, uh, you know, you know they were, they were fine. A few of their young guys were pretty good, but uh, not too much. I mean, Valame was good, but he's very expensive. Uh, Dolphins. Dolphins were pretty underwhelming. Jeremy Marshall King, who a lot of people are keen on, didn't uh, didn't do too hot against a pretty understrength Titans side. But again, don't get too caught up in the it's just a trial. If you're keen on Jeremy Marshall King, don't get like put off just because he had a bit of a 
low score in a fucking trial. Like, if you're keen on him, I still think Marshall King is a good pickup. Don't get too bound up in uh, in the trial score. Uh, front row. Anyone of note? I mean, Flegler, again, he wasn't... That, I mean, I, I've never really been that keen on Flegler for the whole preseason. A lot of people are sort of expecting him to play a lot more minutes. I just don't see it. Like, he was great at the Broncos for that impact role. I don't know why Wayne Bennett would really take that away. I, I think he can... I think his value is pretty much what he's going to score. He might score 45 to 50. I think that's pretty much what Flegler is. So it's not it's not the worst if you pick him up, but I, I don't see him, like, gaining, like, 100K and scoring 60-plus. So, yeah, but fine. Um... Not too, I mean, Josh Kerr. Haven't really talked about Josh Kerr too much. Uh, he was he was pretty solid in the All Stars. I sort of forgot that he signed at the Dolphins. He used to. Be, I mean, he used to be pretty damn good at the Dragons. Then he sort of he tapered off. I don't know if he, if he gets some decent minutes at three fifty k. Josh Kerr is a decent little smoky, but it's just minutes reliant. Two RF we got. Uh. Yeah, they're all... I mean, they're all, like, the similar pro... I mean, I guess you can look at, like... Where is... Gil... Uh, Gilbert's at 600. I thought maybe he'd be cheaper because of the injury. But I guess he played... He scored pretty well before he got injured. So, he's a bit too expensive, even though he's back. Uh, and then, you, you, you don't know. I mean, Connolly Lemuelu looked pretty strong when he came on. But is he going to get the spot again? He's not dual center wing. So, probably not worth it. Uh, halfbacks, not too much else to talk about. Five eights. Again, no. Center wing, a little bit to discuss here. So, again, I don't know how they're going to line up. I mean, Bostock, the cheapy people are going. It, it, it probably seems like he's got that spot locked up. I would, I would think on the wing. Um, I don't think he's a slam dunk, but if he gets the spot at 300k, it's not the worst. Tessie New, I thought was pretty strong. Does he get a spot? Then you got Avarillo who came off the bench. There's a lot of spots. Out. I mean, Valens Tavares is there as well. Like, there's so many spots that are being vied for. The only, like, lockdowns in my mind at the moment is... I mean, Hammer, obviously... Um, I mean, he was great in the All Stars. Like, it's, oh, I am, I am sort of leaning towards going Hammer to start in the center wing. I, I don't know, I don't know. I do like it. He, he's just, he's just a freakish talent. Um, and picking up a fullback in the center wing is always nice. Herbie Farnworth was locked in, and Jermaine Asako, and it, it seemed like it was locked in that Asako will be playing outside of Herbie, which. A lot of people, are, I, I think people are reading too much into like Herbie not being able to pass. I know it is a potential issue, but I think people are going a little bit too like crazy that Zarko is going to be a shocker this year. I think like, yes, Herbie is not the, the, the most pass first guy. He does run the footy and he runs it very well. But the, the other side of that is that because he runs the ball a lot and he runs it so strongly, the winger pretty much has to jam in on him, which is going to lead to more overlaps for Azarko. Now it's just whether or not a Herbie um, starts passing the ball. I, I don't think Azarko is going to be that impacted. That That's my main takeaway. Like if people, people like Herbie's inside of him, Azarko is a dud. I don't, I don't think so. I think, his, I think Azarko will be fine. I mean, I'm definitely not starting Azarko. He's 800k. Um, but man, eleven eleven percent people starting Azarko. That's uh, that's interesting. Um, but Herbie, on the other hand, I don't know. I mean, is he going to get more footy at the Dolphins? Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I, again, I think the Broncos use their centers better than a lot of teams, so I don't necessarily think Herbie's going to get too much more footy than at the Broncos. So at six thirty k, I wouldn't be that keen on him to start. And then fullback, um, yeah, not not too much else to really speak of there. Uh, then we go down to the dragons, the fucking dragons. Oh, they, 
I mean, I don't know. Charity Shield. It was it was it was pretty physical, nice and early. I did I didn't have I mean, people were carrying on that it was the worst game they've ever seen. I thought it was nice and physical. The defensive was pretty good for both sides. Attacking wise it was a bit of a shocker, but you know. I thought it was a pretty aggressive game. I was enjoying it for the most part. Tyro, I don't fucking get I don't understand why they keep assisting with Tyrell Sloan at fullback. He just he's just not NRL standard. I'm sorry. Like he obviously has flashes of brilliance, but like he is the exact opposite of Reese Walsh. Like he's got so many rocks compared to the diamonds. He does have the odd diamond and he looks like a world beater, but he just he's just not cut out for it. I'm sorry. I don't know, maybe a new club. I don't know. I just don't see it. I don't know why they keep assisting with him there. Um, yeah, I just I just don't understand it. Center wing, there's a bit to talk about. Obviously, Zach Lomax was on the wing. <laughs> Fucking put him at fullback, for Christ's sake. Uh, he was kicking goals. Wait, was he kicking goals? He did, right? Am I going crazy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he kicked goals because it was out of, obviously, yeah, Flanagan. Um, but yeah, it was Lomax, which I thought I thought he would. Like, he, he's been the goal kicker for years. Like, I'd be, I was going to be surprised if he wasn't. Um, but on the wing, obviously, I'm not going to pick him up. If, if fucking Flanagan actually makes a bold call and drops Sullivan and puts Lomax to fullback... Fuck, I'd be all over Lomax, but not the way it is at the moment. I mean, Jack Bird at center was fine, I guess. Moses Suley. Fuck, Suley's only 480k. I feel like... Su <laughs> oh, Suley could be an absolute monster, but the Dragons just don't... They just don't use their back line well. It just... He just... He's a tackle buster. He's a freak, but 480k, man. That's so cheap. Uh, we didn't see Russell, I don't think, or he might have came on late, I don't remember. Uh, Tom Eisenhuth was a watch, uh, I don't know, I'm not sold. Obviously, he's 2RF center wing, which is nice, and if he does get that starting back row spot, yeah, like, you pretty much have to pick him, but I'm not sold that he's gonna be too good in the, in the back row. I mean, he was, he was solid enough, but... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens there with the with the back row. I'm not uh, I'm not sure what they're gonna do. Uh, five eight. I think the only one here, Kyle Flanagan. Yeah, without the goal kicking, 300k. I think, yeah, yeah. If he had the goal kicking, he was probably gonna be in most people's teams. I think as the cheapy, maybe. I mean, a couple, there's a couple options, but without the goal kicking, you just, you can, yeah, I don't know, you couldn't go near it, I don't think. Halfbacks, nothing really to talk about. It's only really Ben Hunt. I mean, Hunt's only 600k, but yeah, you're not going to go Ben Hunt. Uh, to our earth, we talked about the only guy of real relevance was um, Eisenhuth. I mean, again, Dan Russell could get the spot. Jane Sewer, fuck, I love Jane Sewer. But yeah, he's not really he's not really a super coach option. I just love him in real life. I wish he'd come back to the Broncos. <laughs> Even though the Broncos uh maybe they do need a back row at the moment with uh Piacura being injured. Jack DeBellin, you'd pick him up in the front row if you're going to. I yeah, I don't know. Not not that keen. Um Fafita or Fafita was was pretty good. I, I think he was pretty good when he came on. I can't I can't remember too much of this game, honestly. Dylan Egan came on late. So a lot of people were excited about him because he was talked up a lot, but didn't get too many minutes from memory. He came on pretty late in the game. But I mean again, if he gets the starting spot, yeah, absolutely. But I don't see him getting it. Front row. Again, not not a whole lot. <laughs> Feeling out my five feeder. Why do I keep saying five feeder? Five feeder. Uh, yeah, it's a cheapy. Obviously, you pick him up in the front row if he gets a spot. Uh, Hame Sally, we didn't see. Molo, Laurie, the Ballon. Yeah, not not a whole lot there, I guess. Um, and then Hooker. Who do they even have? Yeah, Little and Little was fine. But yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be too keen. Uh, Parramatta. So Brennan Hands, the the watch here. 
So Lusick wasn't on the bench. It was another young guy who unfortunately got a head... No- yeah, that's right. It was Arthur's son um, who got a head knock like first tackle. It was a bit of a shocker. Uh, so Hands played more minutes than he was going to, which, I mean, at the end of the day, it comes down to if Brendan Hands gets that spot and there's no dummy half on the bench, no Joey Lusick, then Hands is straight in everybody's team. Uh, it just it just depends on that. I mean, he was he was good, he was fine, but all it depends on is if he gets like big minutes at dummy half. Like even I don't know if it'll be interesting to see. Like if he gets the starting spot, but then Joey Lusick is on the bench, do you still go with Brendan Hands as a cheapie? I don't know, probably not. Uh, it's a it's a tough one. Then we have the front row. Again, not too much to talk about with the. Um, Eels, I mean, Werribee Greg was very good, but, like, it's just the minutes. Like, he does have the impact, so at 300k, if he gets, like, like 30 minutes, like, honestly, he'd be a decent little cheapy, but they just got too many damn middles, man. Like, Offing Gowie, we didn't see, I don't think he came on at all. You got Polo, Campbell Gillard, like, they're all big minute players, like, it's just... Where McGreg was very good, but I just the minutes are just not gonna be there unless there's a couple injuries like last year. Uh, front row forward, Sean Lane. I mean, didn't really do too much, but again, he he played. He played a few minutes. He's in everybody's teams. So let's be honest. I mean, Calvin Tuolangi was actually really fucking good. <laughs> oh man, it feels like every. Every time Kalmatua Lange is at a new club, his, like, first or second game he plays is, like, outstanding. And everybody's like, oh, my God, Tua Lange. I remember when he first, like, debuted, he was really good. And then, for whatever reason, like, at the, the season goes on, he just gets less and less involved. I mean, I guess the spot is... Well, I don't know. It'd be pretty rough to drop Cartwright from the starting spot because he was outstanding last year. But if they do want to use Cartwright as a bench sort of utility slash you know, play anywhere, and Kalma gets the starting spot, I mean, fucking absolutely, I'd probably pick him up at 370k, but um, he'd need to get a starting spot, uh, Jermaine Hopgood was was very good in the All-Stars, but man, 750k, it's, it's a lot to spend on a guy that you're not sure of minutes, um, no one, no one really else there to talk about, but yeah, Kalma, he was fucking good, dude, he was very good, <laughs> he was very good, uh, halfbacks, I don't think we saw, where the hell have we gone, um, we saw the young guy, Ethan Sanders, I thought he had a, he had a bit of a shocker in my mind, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, obviously, it's Moses' spot anyway, 5'8", nothing to really talk about there, obviously, it's just Dylan Brown, center wing, what is Sean Russell Price at, because he was pretty damn good, uh, Simonson, he's 550. Harper, I mean, Harper was actually okay, but I wouldn't expect him. So, Sean Russell, 440k. <sighs> he was just slightly cheaper. Like, Sean Russell is a very good player, and I would expect him to get a starting spot. It's probably just a little bit too much to spend, but he is very good. And then, fullback, there's nothing else to talk about. It's just Gutherson, and he didn't play, obviously. As we move on to the uh, Newcastle Knights, where are we? Newcastle. I might do. I might split this video up into two parts. Yeah, I might do. I might do two parts. We'll we'll, we'll do the we'll do the Knights and then we'll do the rest of the teams um, in in a second part, just because otherwise it's probably going to drag on a little bit too long. Because uh, I don't, I don't want to, like, otherwise I'll probably try to rush through some players and overlook. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do, we'll do the Knights here and then we'll do the, the rest of the, rest of the teams um, in a, uh, in the second part. Because how many teams have we got? We obviously don't have, Panthers uh, didn't play. Yeah, so Panthers didn't play. Um, was there any, any in the... Yeah, I don't think there was any in the the All Stars. Obviously, they're all getting ready for the World Club Challenge. So, yeah, we'll do Knights and then we'll we'll go through the rest. So, dummy halves. Uh, we didn't see Braley, although yeah, it's been reported that he's carrying a hamstring injury. So, very, yeah, you just I don't know. You probably just couldn't risk Braley. Like, 
He, he might be a really good downgrade option in a few weeks, potentially, if he can come back fit. Uh, front row for the Knights. I don't think there's too much to talk about here. Uh, I mean, Leo Thompson was pretty solid. I man, he's four feet. I actually thought Thompson was going to be cheaper coming in, but I guess he was he was pretty good last year as well, Leo Thompson. So he's a little bit overpriced. Well, not overpriced, but he's a little bit too expensive for what you probably want. Uh, I mean, the side... Fuck, Jacob and Daniel... I feel like, what are they, I'm sure one of them, like, a year ago was, like, 600k, right? What did he, so when you started at 440, um, Daniel, was it Jacob then that was very good? They, they both, they both sort of fallen off a cliff in terms of Supico scoring, haven't they? What was, uh, what was Jacob? Was he, th okay. What about 2022? I thought one of them was it was it Daniel, Daniel in 2022? What was he? I know they've had their injuries. Um, what was 2022 like? Okay, yeah, not really. I guess they they get the odd try, which looks good, but yeah, not not too much else, I guess, there for the Saifidi boys. Um, Matt Croker was pretty good. I like the look of Croker, but again, minutes, I wouldn't expect too much. Hetherington, fucking 270k. I, yeah, he's sort of fallen off a cliff as well. Old uh, Jack Hetherington, I think. He needs to get his aggression back, man. I know they, they, they said the stat like he hasn't been suspended in like two years. I think he needs to... He needs to get that mongrel back in him. He's he's just missing it. I don't know. I mean, it's good not to get suspended in Sinbin, but fuck, I don't know. Get a little bit more aggression back in the game, son. Then we got the second rowers, which is definitely a, a watch for the Knights because you got... I mean, Frizzell will get one spot. It's just a matter of if he's on the left or the right. Adam Elliott is there. I'm, I'm not that keen on Elliott, honestly. Dylan Lucas is, I mean, he's dual center wings to RF, so you pick him up in center wing. He, he did score two tries. <laughs> um, again, I wouldn't be overly fucking excited by that. Like, you know, one of them was off a kick. The other one was, was a nice run and a, a good pass back on the inside by uh, Hastings. But it's just, I, I don't know, I just... I don't think I could risk it because then you got Kai Pierce Paul, who is a a good talent coming from the English uh, English comp. He didn't play, but he's expected to play in the next trial. It's I don't know. It's up in the air. Like if one of these guys is starting and then the others on the bench, it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, and then not too much else, but yeah, I mean, out of the <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, Kypies, Paul, Dylan Lucas. I mean, obviously, Lucas is uh, exciting because he's a dual center wing, but Kypies, Paul is probably the guy when he's when he's fully fit, but we'll see. Halfbacks, not too much to talk about in halfbacks for the, for the Knights. Where the hell are they? I mean, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, I guess, just NRL sense, like who gets the spot. Colga Hastings, they got... That uh, young Will Price from from the Super League as well looked really fucking good. Then you got Tyson Gamble. Like, they got a lot of moving parts, which is a good headache to have. They got some good depth in the halves, but, uh, yeah, not not really super coach relevant. I guess the one, like, 5'8", Will Price. Um, is he not even in the game yet? Or have they got him at fullback? That's interesting. Um, yeah, I guess we'll see. Center wing, who do we see for the Knights? Uh, where is... So we didn't see Marju in the All-Stars, which is unfortunate, but he had a, a, a personal issue to to go with. Uh, Bradman Best, Jenkins. Fuck, he's coming in expensive. So, in our, uh, yeah, Tuala is 445. Um, he might get a spot. He's a little again. He's a little bit too expensive, just a touch. I'd probably rather Sean Russell if I was going to go one of those 440k guys. Sean Russell, I think, is a better player. Jake Cartwright, he's dual as well, but I wouldn't expect many minutes. Uh, Matt Papalengi, unfuck, dude, he got absolutely knocked out too. It, it like 
you love to see it. Like, just the ag- like his aggression. To, he was trying to fucking belt him, but it's just one of those unfortunate. He just got his just the hip fucking head in the wrong spot. Got absolutely crunched. Gr- very fucking disappointing because he's one of these freaks coming through that you just wanted to see in the trials. But man, first tackle. Um, a couple of really bad knockouts in in over the weekend, which is unfortunate to see. But um, yeah. Mapapalangi, obviously one for the future. And then fullback. So is Will Price just just fullback? Yeah, he is just fullback. Hopefully they change that for dual half. I mean I don't I don't see Will Price getting a start. Uh but an injury comes up and if he gets a start he he could be a very sneaky uh super coach option because he's definitely got the game for super coach. He's just uh he's a little uh nippy five eight, I guess, slash fullback. I don't I don't know. Did he play more? I thought he played in the halves more in the Super League. I don't really... I, I remember seeing highlights of him. I thought he was more a half, but maybe he was a fullback. I, I don't know. Um, that's right. David Armstrong. He, he was the... I think he was the guy that came on in the wing and was really strong. So he's just fullback as well. I mean, he could push for a spot. He could definitely push for a spot on that wing instead of Tuala, maybe. Hopefully, they update him to have dual center wing because you're definitely not going to pick him at fullback. But he he looked very good. I think that's the guy I'm thinking of, David Armstrong. I think that's the... Yeah, he looked really strong. Um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the night. So, that'll do for part one of the trials. Like I said, I'll, I'll do the rest of the teams in part two. Hopefully, guys are enjoying the Supercoach preseason discussions. And uh, make sure to like and comment. I'll see you guys in the next one.